You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. These are the news headlines today, the 28th of November. An illegal immigrant who claimed £400,000 in benefits gets caught. Forced marriages outlawed in Scotland. Italy reported to be getting around €600 billion Euros on a low interest rate for one and a half years. Angry protesters have gathered across Pakistan protesting at NATO airstrike. The Arab League meeting in Cairo has voted for sanctions against Syria and Egypt has begun its first elections since the uprising. UK News. An illegal immigrant who has received £400,000 in benefits for claiming to be paralysed gets seven years in prison for being caught dancing at his own wedding. 37-year-old Mohamed Bouzalim claimed he was paralysed from the neck down and has received to date housing benefits, disability living allowance, income support, council tax benefits, special housing benefits, payments for social fund carers, plus more payments from the Independent Living Fund. This Muslim arrived in Britain nine years ago from North Africa. He had been claiming ever since. Investigators found that he had also passed his driving test without help from carers. He came to Britain claiming his father was killed by the Taliban. He also brought his two brothers and one sister over to England, claiming that they were his carers. He made force pay slips so that the money could be transferred to their bank accounts. He also claimed that he could not get out of a chair unaided, yet he walked to the court unaided during his trial. Forced marriages outlawed in Scotland. The Scottish Law Society has gone into action against forced marriages. Any person found forcing somebody into a marriage can carry the penalty of up to two years in prison. The law, which is only in Scotland and has not been put forward in any other part of Britain. One reporter has said that it should be enforced throughout the whole of England. These foreign criminals use forced marriages to claim citizenship and get illegals into Britain. He also added that the new law, only being in Scotland, would be a waste of time because the crime of forced marriages can be carried out just over the border in England. The law now falls only under the Protection and Jurisdiction Act of Scotland. Euronews. Tabloids in Italy reported that the country will get around 600 billion euros on a low interest rate for one and a half years to support their ever-failing country's economic crisis. But the IMF has said that no discussions have ever taken place to help Italy. Eurozone finance ministers are meeting early this week to sort out their 440 billion euro rescue fund. The new Italian Prime Minister Mario Monti is said to be ready to deal with the measures of raising the pensions age and raising sales and housing tax to help the economy. Italy on the bond market is said to be close to the same situation that Ireland, Portugal and Greece found themselves in when they had to receive their international bailouts. The Prime Minister is also considering that the 10% tax rise in the country's bars and restaurants be enforced. The austerity measures of Mario Monti are yet to take effect on the Italian people, one reporter has claimed. World News Angry protesters have gathered across Pakistan over the weekend to protest against the NATO airstrike that killed 24 of its troops near the border with Afghanistan. The bodies of the Pakistani soldiers were laid to rest near a military base, reports have claimed. The attack by NATO on the Pakistani soldiers was said to be in retaliation to Pakistani soldiers firing first, but the Pakistani military has denied this claim. The Pakistani government has retaliated by cutting supply lines to NATO forces in Afghanistan. The Arab League meeting in Cairo has voted for sanctions against Syria. The League has been refused entry of its monitors who say they wanted to see the brutality that the government is allowing against its protesting opposition. The League will assess the sanctions which are economic next Saturday to review the effect. Referring to these sanctions, the first of any kind of action by the Arab League, 19 of the Arab 22 states voted for sanctions against their member state, Syria. The assets of the Syrian leaders have been frozen in Arab member states and all dealings with the central bank have been halted, plus a ban on all officials from Syria from travelling to other member states. Arab spokespersons have said that if Syria complied with the Arab League, the sanctions would be lifted. 
A British National Party spokesperson commented, The Arab League and its members clearly want an Islamic fundamentalist government in place as quickly as possible and are using their full power to gain just that. Egypt has begun its first elections since the uprising that ended the Mubarak era. The Egyptian people lined up for hours before polling began early this morning. The lower house elections begun in Luxor, Cairo and Alexandria, with towns like Port Said following on. Before the elections began, the Field Marshal Hussein Tantawi said that the way you vote can decide on safety for Egypt or danger. He also added that voting for danger would be opposed and stopped by military intervention. A suicide bomber has killed himself along with 11 other people in the Iraqi capital Baghdad. The bomber, who was part of the insurgents, carried out the attack in protest to the new Iraqi government. Thought for the day. Looking at the national news headlines today gives anyone a cause celebre in the ridiculous. Taliban fighters are to get £100 a month to stop them shooting at our soldiers. What will they get to stop blowing them up? Islamic party poised for power in Egypt? I told you so. Lax Olympic border checks may let in illegals. Clearly the border checks will be as bad as they usually are. £330 million in aid to Africa for fighting global warming. This aid is mainly to South Africa, which doesn't need it, and the Sudan, which does, but operates under an Islamic government, so let the Saudis pay for this one. And oh yes, a general strike on Wednesday in the UK. Lovely, just what we need when entering a double-dip recession forecasted by our own Nick Griffin many, many moons ago. I am not a union person. I think that when the Western world and England in particular needed unions was when the following were commonplace. Shoving small children up chimneys. Putting debtors in the workhouse until their debt was paid or they died. Hanging small children for stealing bread because they were hungry. Hanging poachers or deporting them for hunting animals for eating that the lord of the manor hunted for sport. Putting people who had mental breakdowns in bedlam for the rest of their lives putting men in mines for whole generations without proper safety controls, taking young boys off the street for cabin boys in the Navy, and much, much more. As usual, our timing is not good, and we got unions when all this was more or less dealt with. Now they are striking because of alterations to their pensions, which they are lucky to get anyway with the recession and the previous Labour government who they voted in for 13 years, unlucky for most. I say it is better to have a pension, even if you have to contribute more and work a couple of years longer for and help your country's finances than strike like petulant schoolchildren, which will again cost our country dear. What are these people thinking of? There are people in this country that are hungry and homeless, and this action will not benefit them at all. The days of needing militant unions are long gone, and may they never return. And finally, in a heavily guarded laboratory in Colombia, 11 white rats have been trained to locate landmines. Colombia sees conflict after conflict, with each side using landmines against the other. The 11 specially trained rodents have been taught to sniff out any landmines that are the cause of hundreds of people being injured or killed every year. The reward for each rat that sniffs out a landmine is a piece of sugar. Not bad for a day's work for the rat. My comment, I am with the rat here, sniff and run for your life, ratty. But as it is in Colombia, drug central of South America, perhaps they will give them a little coke. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I wish you all a very good night. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news.